You are above every other Your love amazes me You created every beautiful color For everyone to see I want the world to know I want my life to show Just what your love has done for me
You got this. You got this. You got this. You have got this. Yay. Yeah. Now we're focused. Hey everyone, it's Erica. You might be wondering what I'm doing talking to myself in the mirror. Hey, what's up, how are you doing? Well, I decided I needed a little encouragement because it's been sort of a hard week. You see, a few days ago, my aunt was stuck at home with a broken leg. So, I took some soup to her house, but then her dog <coughs> peed on my shoe. And then I slipped and spilled the soup all over the place. And then the next day, I was walking home from the library and a car drove through a puddle next to me and splashed water all over me and all over my library book. Are you kidding me? Then, yesterday, I tripped over a sleeping cat and I fell into a prickly rosebush. Ah, ow, ow. <laughs> so, you know, it's been one of those weeks. And I'm trying to encourage myself to have a better day. But it's going to take faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. So even though I still have a few scratches from yesterday's catastrophe, I have faith that today will be better. See? It's better already! Today's story is all about some people who are having a bad week. Actually, several weeks. And uh, okay, maybe they had bigger problems and spilled soup, a wet library book, and a thorny rose bush. But my week was still pretty bad. <laughs> I'll see you when the storm passes. That'll make sense after the story. It's, it's, it's. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapters 27 and 28. Paul faced many difficult days because he taught so boldly about Jesus. He was beaten, made fun of, thrown into jail and run out of town. At last, in Jerusalem, Paul was arrested by Roman soldiers after a mob tried to kill him. He speaks against our law! Get, get rid of that guy! Ooh. Paul paced in his prison cell. The Lord stood next to him. Be brave. You have told people about me in Jerusalem. You must do the same in Rome. Because a group of Jews were plotting to kill him, Paul was taken to the governor in Caesarea. From there, he was ordered to Rome to stand trial before Caesar. Then, he was handed off to a Roman commander for the sea journey. I am Julius of the Imperial Guard. I am very imperious, but also a reasonable human being. Glad to hear it. Julius allowed Paul to visit with friends as they stopped at the port city of Sidon. From there, they sailed around Cyprus, transferred to a ship from Egypt, carrying grain to Italy. The ship fought against the wind for many days until they arrived in a town on the island of Crete called Fair Havens. It was already well into October, a risky time for sea travel. Men, I can see that our trip is going to be dangerous. The ship will be lost and our own lives will be in danger. A reasonable concern. The pilot and ship's owner wanted to reach a better harbor for the winter. Pish posh. We can make it to Phoenix. Oh, well. Feel that? Gentle southerly breeze. Perfection. We leave at once. Anchors away! But very soon, the gentle breeze transformed. Within a short time, the wind beat against the ship with the strength of a hurricane. The pilot gave up fighting the gale. Hoist the lifeboat! Secure ropes around the bow. Jettison the cargo. In the midst of the chaos, the Lord sent an angel to Paul. The next morning, Paul withstood the storm to encourage the crew and passengers. 276 people. A first, uh, not to say I told you so, but uh, 
I told you so. Second, not a problem. Last night, an angel from God told me, do not be afraid, Paul. You must go on trial in front of Caesar. God has shown his grace by sparing the lives of all those sailing with you. But we must run the ship onto an island. On the 14th night of the storm, the sailors realized they were nearing land. The water is only 90 feet deep here. Drop the anchor. The crew was so afraid of crashing against the rocks that they lowered the lifeboats, planning to escape and leave the passengers. Julius, these men must stay with the ship. If they don't, you can't be saved. A reasonable request. Cut the ropes. The soldiers cut the ropes so the crew could not escape. Just before dawn, Paul gathered everyone on board, shouting above the wind. Not a problem. None of you will lose a single hair from your head. Now, I'm asking you to eat so you can live. Paul took bread and thanked God. He then broke the bread and ate it. Everyone was filled with hope while they had some food to eat as the gray morning dawned. There's the beach. Lift the anchors and we'll run her aground. But as the pilot steered desperately for shore, the ship hit a sandbar and began to break into pieces. The soldiers were planning to kill Paul and the other prisoners to keep them from swimming to freedom. Stop! Don't hurt them! Paul must live! Everyone overboard, swim to land or grab a piece of the wreckage! Miraculously, everyone made it to shore, just as God had promised. Welcome to Malta! The people of Malta were unusually kind as they built a fire to welcome this large group of wet and stranded visitors. I'll fetch some more firewood. Paul tossed sticks into the fire. Then a deadly snake slithered out and sunk his teeth into Paul's head. This man must be a murderer. The gods won't let him live. Not a problem, totally fine. Paul simply shook the snake into the fire. When the people saw he was unharmed, they decided he was a god. Publius, a chief official, welcomed Paul and the others into his home. Take whatever you need. Paul discovered that Publius, his father, was very sick. So he prayed. Jesus, please, heal this man. Publius, his father, was made well. All the sick people on the island flocked to see Paul, and they too were healed. Paul had so much respect on Malta that when it was time to leave, the people of Malta gave him all the supplies they needed. Bon voyage! At long last, Paul neared Rome. The believers had heard he was on his way and traveled to meet him. Welcome to Rome. I thank God for you all. In Rome, Paul was allowed to live in his own home, under guard. For two years, he welcomed anyone who came to see him. He told Jews and Gentiles alike the good news of Jesus, just as God promised he would. So a shipwreck is probably worse than tripping on a cat, but a bad week is a bad week. And the important thing to realize is that we all have problems and we all get to choose how we react to those problems. Paul chose to trust that God was with him no matter what he was going through. You see, Paul understood that God had a bigger plan. Ever since Paul came to know Jesus as God's son, he had devoted his life to telling others about Jesus. And Paul knew that no matter what problems he faced, they were worth it if it helped him spread the good news of Jesus to the world. So Paul didn't necessarily focus on the storm, the shipwreck, and the snake bite like they were problems. Instead, he trusted that God was leading him somewhere. He trusted that God had a plan. And Paul's not the only person who can change focus like that. We can too! When we hope and trust in Jesus, it can change how we look at our problems. That's the one thing to remember today. Knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems. When you're having one of those weeks, or months, or years, or whenever we have a problem, sometimes the bad stuff is all we can focus on. 
But when you know that God has a plan and that Jesus is always with you, it can help take the focus off yourself and put your focus on Him. Whenever you're facing tough situations, remembering that God is with you can make it less hard or scary. So don't forget, God has got this. See you next time. Bye.